Right, overnight, two more shootings in Auckland, which means this week alone has seen 12 firearms incidents, with seven taking place in a single night. Our next guest is no stranger to gang culture. He wasn't a member himself. He did spend 14 years in prison on drug-related charges, but is now helping former gang members find a life free of crime. Billy McFarlane joins me in the studio now. Billy, appreciate your time and for coming into the studio this morning. Let's look at the numbers. How many people, roughly, do you believe that there are uh, involved in gangs? Um, I think the numbers are under, grossly underestimated. Um, I believe we already have more, more gang members in the country than we've got police. Well, the estimate is 7,000. Yeah, but I think they're counting the main gang, the main, main gangs, but there's, there's like around 50 street gangs in Auckland alone. I don't think we're counting all the numbers in... We're not counting the people that are associated with gangs that are, that are not coming into the police's, um, under the police's radar. So, you know, those, those figures, in my opinion, are grossly underestimated. Right, and especially when we look at there's 13,000 police staff, they're not all on the front line. So you, you believe that gang numbers might already outnumber police numbers? Yes, I believe so, and, and we already know, there's already proof to say that the gang recruitment is, is, is um, overtaking police recruitment. So the numbers are, are, are moving into a space where in the, in the next five years, we're going to have probably twice as many gang members as we've got police. Why is there such a rise? Because it's, it's becoming um, acceptable by our, 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 our government and our, and our, our politicians. We, 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 we have to make a stand and say it's not acceptable for this stuff to continue to, to go on. We, we, we keep having people say... Um, oh, but they're just whānau, or they're OK, they're not as bad as, they, as we're saying they are, we need to work with them, we need to... I mean, we need to, we need to call it what it is and we need to say we're not going to accept it anymore as a society. Well, this is interesting because this is... You're saying that they're saying we're, we're accepting it, but we've got the Prime Minister in New York at the moment saying, look how well we've done on gang control. Do you think that we've what got, we have done has worked? No, obviously it hasn't. Otherwise, the numbers would be would be falling, and we wouldn't have people getting shot at in the street. The, the prime minister saying that we're dealing with the gun problem, yet the buyback scheme was a complete failure, in my opinion. It played right into the hands of the underworld. The prices for a handgun went up from five hundred dollars to ten thousand dollars. So now that the price of, of guns is, is the value is, is risen in the underworld. Many um, underworld figures and gang members and that have, have access to these guns, and we know that even if they don't have access to them, as long as there's guns for hunting or for or for police or anything, the gang members are going to go and find ways to get those guns. So, what happened to the pool of guns when there was that gun buyback scheme? Did more end up? Are you saying more ended up in the hands of the people who shouldn't have had them? Of course, but but I mean the, the government's even admitted that they don't know how many guns there are in New Zealand. So it doesn't matter how many you buy back. How, how do you know whether you're getting 10% uh, of the guns or whether you're getting 2% of the guns? Like there's still guns coming over the border. Okay, so what, what do we do about this? In terms of approach, the uh, police have been trialling this resilience and organised crime in four districts where you go in and you look at what are the root problems of gangs. And it's kind of a, a, a whole uh, picture look at gangs. Now we've got the government potentially due to some political pressure saying, no, we've got this Operation Cobalt, we're going to crack down. And then on the other end, you've also got the National Party talking about this um, strike force Raptor-style policing and a specific gang unit with warrantless search powers. What approach works? Well, those, those tactical squads that they're calling them, they're focused on drugs at the moment. The biggest problem that lies within gangs is not drugs, it's, it's violence. So you can, you can go in the, with a tactical squad and look at and, and arrest all of the people that are dealing drugs or using drugs, but, I mean, as, as, a, as a human being, would you rather have somebody sitting outside your house smoking drugs or shooting at people? Like, you know, we've got to target the overall institution of gangs. For me, it's not about targeting gang members, it's about targeting the institution of gangs. We have to say we're not going to accept gangs in our country. We're not going to arrest our way out of the problem, obviously, but there's no opportunities for these men and women to get into a better space. Do you... Um, I've heard you say that you believe that police are actually enabling gang crime to happen in, in some ways and uh, escorting them. Yeah, well, sometimes they're just escorting that? them to their conventions instead of stopping them from going to those conventions. 
we've got police that are saddled up next to next to active gang members doing youth work. And, like, you know, I have the saying that you're either part of the solution or you're part of the problem. You can't blame police, though, surely, when, as you say, they're outnumbered. Well, <laughs> it's not going to get any better, so you might as well try and deal with the problem now where you're a little bit outnumbered, then wait till you're twice as outnumbered as you are now. I, I believe that the police and lots of social workers and all that, they, they, they can make a big impact on, our, on the problem, but you've got to be in there working with them with a focus on dismantling their culture not just working with them for, so that you can watch over them. Is there gang involvement in this spike we're seeing in ram raids? Oh, I, I can't answer that. I don't, I don't, I don't know. But what, my concern with that is that they're saying that it's youth that are doing it too. Like, it's not only youth that have always been involved in ram raids and we don't know whether there's adults involved with sending those youths into their shop. But we're, we're going to put these policies around um, youth and, and crime when we need to have a look at no, no one's really sure what's going on there, including me. Gang rehabilitation leader Billy McFarlane. Billy, really appreciate your time and your insights on AM here this morning. Thank, Thank you. you.